like to talk about middle of the field coverages and split safety coverages and the difference in how you can package them together to coach them. Um, first of all, let me give you the philosophy of playing zone pass defense that we have. You know, first of all, you drop to an area, you reroute receivers that are running in areas that you would rather them not be. So drop and reroute is number one. Pattern match is number two and this is with zone integrity and number three is break on the ball now that's our philosophy of playing pass defense that's what we try to do now there's three types of coverages that we play we play zone we play man to man and we play zone man to man match coverages which means that once you buy one you got a man to man after the pattern distribution that's the difference does everybody understand what I'm talking about when I say after the pattern distribution I'll, I'll just you know everybody counts receivers either from outside in or one through five or whatever but the way we try to coach our players on pass defense is that let's just say they run a simple what I call base four here alright now this guy was one, two, three, four, five, if you number that way from strong to weak, or one and two weak and one, two, three strong. Well, after the pattern distribution, who's one? Or this could be one and two, right? So if, we're, if we say you match the pattern after the pattern distribution, basically that's how you pattern read. If you're playing zone, what you do is you extend your zone to the pattern match, but you still play zone. In other words, as we drop here on this side, this backer and this backer drop on a string based on what that guy does. And when he goes out there, this guy drops through the outside receiver. This guy always relates to two after the pattern distribution. If we were playing three deep zone, whoever it is that drops over here that had the front side hook would take three and the strong safety would take and match two and don't let one catch the ball and run with it outside of you. So eventually you have to go through here and obviously this is the weakness. They have three guys, you have two defenders. So you have to squeeze it with the corner from top down based on key. But that's what I mean by after the pattern distribution. So I, I, I'll probably say that a lot because that's how we coach our players. So I, I think it's probably good that you understand that. All right, now, first of all, this is how we teach our players a three deep coverage. All right, now, there, we have three... And this is what we show them. We, we have basically three coverages that we play with a middle of the field safety, which I think if you have a middle of the field safety, everybody coaches the quarterback, is there safety in the middle? Is there not a safety in the middle? I think. All right. But anyway, we coach the defense the same way. You've got a middle of the field safety, you can play strong rotation zone, weak rotation zone, which to us three is strong, six is weak, or you can play cover one, which is man-to-man -man with the free safety and a rat in a hole, or you can play cover zero, which is man-to-man -man with the free safety and no rat in a hole, five guys rushing. But those are all the middle of the field. But there's principles of middle of the field coverages that everybody needs to understand that stay the same in terms of leverage, horizontally and vertically. All right, now, the first thing we show a player, and it didn't make any difference if I was coaching junior high or the Cleveland Browns or the Houston Oilers, if we get a middle of the field coverage, that's what happened here. That's the part of, of the field that the free safety is going to cover. So everyone else's technique and leverage is based on this principle right here. That's pretty simple, right? Makes sense to everyone? 
All right, now, the second thing is, is if we're playing a three-deep zone or a man-to-man -man middle of the field coverage, the two parts of the field that we do not want the receivers in are those two areas right there, the darkened in part. And I don't know, is the high school field like a college field now? Did they move the hash marks a little bit in high school too? They left them out. So we've got three different fields here. All right. Well, I can tell you from knowing the old college field, which is what you have, is that that seam of the field is from 14 to 17 yards from the sidelines, which is your hash mark out three yards. Correct? All right, now, if you have a middle of the field safety in here, if you have a middle of the field safety in here, where do, if you have a middle of the field safety in here, and you let people run down this part of the field, especially if it's a double seam pass, your middle of the field safety will not make those plays in practice if you do a break on the ball drill with them. He won't do it unless he's a great one. And he probably won't do it then if the quarterback's a great one. So that's what I'm talking about, reroute people out of those areas. Somebody always has reroute of those areas if a guy's running vertically in that seam. And then the next thing we teach the guy is if the number two receiver is running vertically in that seam, it's probably down to about three patterns that you're going to see. This might be a little bit different in high school, but college and pro ball, it's, it's pretty close to this. But this is how I always categorize for the players. So right now, if the tight end, if we're in a pro formation, the tight end runs in the seam. I'll just draw it up here for you not to scale. Let's say this guy does this and he's running in the seam. Right now the players in the back end and the linebackers know that there's about three patterns that they're going to run. The first one will be a double seam, a smash, or a seam, and an out. Basically what you're going to get. Do you get other patterns other than that? I'm, there are other patterns, don't get me wrong. But those are the basic three when two runs down the seam. And the one that kills three deep zone is double seam. But the best formation to run double seam in is two by two, one back set. Okay, now there's a method to my madness. You know, we play cover three a lot when there's two backs in the backfield, but not very much when there's a one back set because of what I just said. Now, does everybody see my principle here? All right, now, if this guy tries to run in the seam, the strong safety in our defense, as he dro drops to the curl flat, we tell him, you drop to the seam, 10 yards deep in the seam. And why is that important? Because if you reroute a guy early, I always talk about keeping receivers cut off. In other words, you've got to stay on top of them to keep them cut off. It doesn't make any difference what you play, man-to-man, -man, whatever.
The flat defender can't do it, especially on your field. Now, in pro ball, we didn't do it that way. The flat defenders did it all the time, but the ball was always in the middle of the field. Okay? To me, you can't play 3 deep zone if you let guys run down those spots on the field. And you've got to reroute them at 10 yards, which means you have to be on top of the guy and make him run around you. Now, we had a no-bump rule, and they used to bitch all the time at uh, the people we played against because we were big and physical, so we weren't going to let people run down the field. But we get on top of a guy, and if I'm Carl Banks and I'm standing on top of the guy to reroute him right here, and I'm six foot four, 258 pounds, I don't have to really hit the guy. If he just runs around me, I got done what I want done. Correct? All right, so that, that's the reroute. Now, if that guy's coming in the seam and I am this flat defender, A, who has the smash? The flat defender. So if the guy runs a smash, and any smash is a stop other than a three-step in the first ten yards of the down, I just forget the reroute and go take the smash. And when you cover the smash, you drive on the smash on the upfield shoulder of the smash. So, and if you do that, the guy can't whip back away from you. All right? If I reroute the seam and there's no smash, then I know I'm either getting double seam or out. So when I come off this, I'm going to push what I call the pull route, which is the out route. Either going to be double out, this guy's going to run the scene, that guy's going to run out. And that's where i got to go next. And I can't get there. But again, it's the philosophy of how you want to get beat. If you're going to be a good defensive team, you have to defend the middle of the field. You have to defend the middle of the field. You cannot, you cannot let people throw the ball in the middle of the field. So rather than run out to take the out route away, I would rather not let the quarterback throw the ball in the seam, down the field. Make them throw it short and in the flat to beat you. Now, if the quarterback sprints out, you flood the coverage because now he can throw the ball in the flat effectively. And you should flood the coverage and play flow rule. But if you take the simple principle of what I said after the pattern distribution, if they flow and four guys go to one side, do your backers still drop to the flat and the hook on the back side? Absolutely not. If we're pattern matching, we're sliding everything with where their guys are. Right? Just like basketball. Zone man to man. Right? The ball's in this corner. You see guys move over to take the guy in their area. That's what we're talking about. If they move the whole field into this corner, then our whole defense would be over there leveraging that whole thing the same way. Okay. Now, let me talk about, if that's the case, and that middle of the field deal, that middle of the field deal is still in your mind, then if I'm a corner, there's a horizontal position that I want to maintain on a receiver. I'm not actually going to teach you coverages here, guys. I'm going to teach you more principles. All right, so... If that middle of the field player, and we had that diagram up here like this, all right, is going to cover that area right there, like that other diagram was. All right, let's say a receiver comes out here. What is a good point that I would want to play inside or outside technique on that guy relative to my middle of the field safety? The further that guy is away from the safety, at some point in time I need to come inside of him. All right, now the divider that I give and you can, you can move it a yard or two when the ball's on the hash, it's 10 yards from the sidelines. I don't know what, our numbers in, in college is, top of the number is 9 yards. Pro ball, it was 12 to the bottom. All right, so it's 2 yards bottom of the number becomes your divider. And this, it's 1 yard top of the number. I don't know what yours are, maybe you've got to walk them off. All right, but this is the divider, and I'm saying the ball's in the middle of the field. If that guy lines up inside of that, I'm going to play him outside technique all the way. And I'm going to maintain that position on him relative to my divider, not relative to my initial alignment. Does that make sense? The divider runs a plane all the way through the field. So if this guy lines up here as a receiver, I'm outside of him. If he stems me out to there, where should I be? Inside. Because if he's outside the divider, he's too far away from the safety for the safety to make a play if the guy runs a slim post. 
So I want to be inside out on them. And I'm defending the middle of the field again. Is everybody with me? In other words, if he lines up there, I'm inside. And I say inside or outside relative to your divider. Relative to your divider. If the guy's two yards outside of your divider, you may be almost a yard inside of him. You don't always line up outside. You guys ever wonder, and there's pro ball teams now that the corners always play outside technique in a deep third. There are teams in pro ball that play that way. And if you've seen Jerry Rice, he's probably caught a thousand slim posts in his career on corners that do that. In other words, he'll line up right here. He'll come down the field and stem the guy like that outside a divider, and the guy will backpedal and maintain the same position on him and outside technique, and he'll get him here, and he'll run that slim post and catch the ball right there, and the safety can't get there. And it, you just can't, you can't get it. But if you change the technique, then you can cut off the post. If he's going to run a post corner, it, on every route, it'll put you in the proper position. If he's going to run a post corner, he's going to stem you to here. Where are you going to be? You're going to be outside of him now. Now he's closer to the safety. The safety can help you in the deep part of the field. So that's the principle of how we teach horizontal position on a receiver. All right, now, how do you maintain position on a receiver when he comes off? I call it position maintenance. All right. Look, guys, backpedaling is the most overrated thing in playing in the secondary, in my opinion. And I used to teach him backpedal all the time I, until I got Everson Walls. The guy got 66 interceptions in the National Football League and cannot backpedal. Cannot backpedal and runs a 4-8-40 playing corner. But he can play in a half turn and maintain position and drive out of a half turn just as well as any player that I've ever coached could do it out of a backpedal. And Frank Minifield was quicker than, than anybody that I coached in terms of the great feet and change. But you can actually play the player closer in a half turn because what do you always have to teach your players? Backpedal when the guy breaks your cushion down, turn, because it's going to take you time to turn. So you've got to turn early. So what do you have to do to play in a backpedal? Actually keep more cushion. Right? But anyway, if I am going to backpedal, could you stand up for me? There's two ways all right, that, that you want to maintain position. Now, to me, if, a, if I want to maintain position outside, I'll, I'll just take my ass and let my ass fall to the sidelines. And if I do that, that's going to make me go in this direction. Right? This is what kills a lot of corners when they play in the deep third if you let them do this. They'll turn like this, and then once they get going this way, they think they're going straight back, and they're not. Now, if you keep them square, and you make them adjust their feet as they go, heel to toe, you get to the same place, and you stay square. All right? And when you're square, I think you have, relatively square, you have a better chance of adjusting, keeping position, and not getting disoriented. Now, if I want to go this way on this guy, I just go like this. Back pedal like this. If I want to change... It's just heel-toe, no more than that. If I want to change and go this way, I just bring it back over here like this. Now, you can let them turn their butt, all right, but when you turn your butt inside, and now that guy runs a square in and you want to squeeze them, your hips are turned out where you don't want them to be. Now, we play a lot of bail bump. I have to move a little closer. Where you play like this on the guy. All right, now, for me to maintain the position that I need to, to, to on this guy, all I have to do is I run off wherever he is on the divider, I'm going to be inside or outside of him. But I can play him a lot closer because if you want to take off now, go ahead. I got you cut off, right? I'm already running with you. Keep him cut off because if he gets on top, what happens? All right, now, run an out route. He disappears. I can roll over and be just as close to him. Closer than being off of him, right? And if he runs in there... I can just squeeze them right off relative to the divider. So really, to teach kids how, and, and most kids cannot backpedal very well. I mean, I watch little kids, my, I got a nine-year-old little boy. He's in soccer practice, karate practice, basketball practice. So I've watched little kids from five years old go through things. And when they are at soccer practice, none of them know how to backpedal. They can't backpedal. They can all run. They can cross over. They can do a lot of things, but then none of them can backpedal. It's not natural for them. So 
But if you teach players to play in a backpedal, I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm just saying that they need to learn how to play in a half turn. It will help them a lot. Does everybody understand the principle of the horizontal position you've got to maintain? Now, the vertical position that you want to maintain, if you play in a backpedal, has got to be two to four yards. And it's got to be relative to your speed to his speed. But I wanted to use that principle there. And then if you take the pattern matching principle uh, that I talked to you about earlier, that's how your underneath coverage goes. If we're playing three deep zone, all right, and when we put three deep zone in, this is how I do it. And I know you guys are going to say you're crazy, you can't do that. But I teach everybody there, everybody's drop. Because when we play nickel against multiple personnel groups, you've got a strong safety playing the front side hook. So you relate to the spot and the drop and how you relate to the pattern in that spot, not just your position. And I'll give you an example. Whether it's three deep zone, Okay, now, we have these zones on the field. I'm going to draw a little formation up here. All right, we got a flat. We got a curl. Got a hook. We got a hook, which extends to the curl and the flat, right? All right, now, if we're playing cover three, we actually have a guy that drops to the curl flat. We have a guy that drops to the strong hook. Weak hook, weak flat. Now, and we have three deep players on top of them. Is that correct? All right, now, I don't, if we're playing cover three, this guy's a strong safety. This is the will backer. Two inside backers are the hook players. If we're playing cover six, which is weak rotation, this guy's a safety. This guy's the will. This guy's the Mike. This guy will end up being a Sam. If we're playing three buzz, which means we're make, playing an eight-man front with the safety in the box. This guy right here is a safety. This guy's a Sam. This guy's a Mike. This guy's a Will. If we're playing six buzz, this guy's the Will. This guy's a safety. So what I'm tr showing you is that when you teach it, rather than teaching three different coverages and three different cloud buzz, which means backer support, safety down inside to get an eight-man front, you just teach everybody these are the principles of your drops when we play three deep zone. All right, the guy that's dropping to the weak flat, we drop him inside out on the outside receiver. Unless the guy's inside divider, then he'll go outside of him. Ten yards deep. Keys number two. The number two receiver, whether he's in the backfield or on the line. If that guy runs in the seam, this guy's got to reroute him. But what are the patterns going to be? Smash, double seam, pull. So if that guy runs in the seam or stays inside, this guy wants to make sure he can play the flat. So he'll get outside the guy. If this guy does this and runs back underneath, then because this guy is matching this guy at 10 yards and going to slide his zone because he's relating to number two, then this guy here will close the window on one. Does everybody know what I mean by close the window? In other words, I'm dropping out here like this, all right, and I see the back runs an angle under. Right here is the receiver coming up the field. All right, I'm going to do this and slide back and close the window and play this guy from inside out now. Again, we're defending the middle of the field first. Because if my Mike linebacker and I are tied on a string, and he's working back to match that pattern, then the distance between us cannot get large. Er, and that's what I mean by close the window. Okay, if this guy runs to the flat, then I know that the mic's going to do what? Expand to the final two. So that means I can do what? Go through, make sure that guy hang a little bit, make sure he can't catch it and run, because that guy's coming out. Now, basically, and if the guy blocks, that's the same as him staying inside. The mic's got to stack him, plays the hook, so I'm going to play inside out on the outside guy. That's the pattern reads for those two guys. Now, it doesn't make any difference if that guy's a safety, a will, a safety, a mic, a will. It doesn't make any difference. They learn that. 
Then you go to this side and do the same thing. This guy's always relating to number three. This guy's relating to number two. Don't let one catch the ball and run with it outside of you because you're going to defend the middle of the field first. Now, everything's based in this case. You probably have three receivers out on what that guy does. If he goes to the flat, you're going to get stretched in a hurry. But this guy still has to stay on three because you're going to get something like this, and this guy's going to stack right there. And the strong safety's always got two on one. Always. If they run a strong side flood. Always. Cover three is not good against strong side passes. Now, if we tie in protection that a team runs and pattern if you can. I don't know how much of this you see, but a lot of teams that run strong side want to free release three guys of this side, which means this guy's always got to be in a protection. So you change one thing, we call it bingo, and you say if this guy blocks, we're flooding the coverage. If he just checks, we're flooding the coverage, because where's the quarterback going to throw the ball? Strong side. His read is strong side. The guys running out for a pass on the weak side, are getting, they're, they're practicing running routes. They're not catching any balls. All right, so as soon as I start to drop, this guy's the back, he checks, he's in the protection, I flop over, yell bingo, and everybody floods, and we, we, we match one, two, and three strong. That's where the ball's going. Just like flow pass rule, except they both go that way when you get flow pass, and it's easy to read. So this guy's always going to relate to the final three. He's got the hook curl. Now, the corners, read the three-step drop, line up on your divider, inside or outside technique, squeeze number one man-to-man -man unless two's running in the scene. And the one pattern is, is the smash. He should be playing the seven cut. That's basically it. So the principles now of those coverages, we do strong and weak rotation. Coverage both, middle of the field coverage. Now, the only reason I'm talking about middle of the field coverage is I don't know if you can play that much split safety coverage unless you're playing against a one-back spread out, run and shoot type of team because we can't play it that much because we can't stop the run because people run the ball more in college and I know they run the ball more in high school. So playing cover three and cover one become really important factors I think, for us, unless we're playing against a real passing team. All right, now, I'm going to talk about, this is a coverage that I think very few college teams play. Very, it's the number one coverage in pro ball, basically because you can't get away with playing cover three. Because that last thing I said about breaking on the ball, if you watch the quarterback in pro football, all you're going to do is watch him complete passes. That's, that's all. When Dan Marino's throwing it, the, the, the time that you break on it is minimal because it gets there fast. So if you're not matching the pattern and trying to cheat yourself to where you're supposed to go, you're never going to make it. You're never going to make a plus. You're always going to be a day late and a dollar short. But it's a pretty simple principle to teach kids, and, and, and it's not that hard. Now, but before I get into cover one, anytime it's a play-action pass, you should teach your players to play the play and match the pattern. And I'm going to just give you an example. All right, let's just say that we're playing cover three. And, and you guys probably, whether it's a one back or whatever, you probably all see this boot, right? All right, now, if we're, if we're playing three deep zone, any zone, it, it, this, is just, this is how it gets presented. If they run a boot pass, which means the backs divide and the quarterback comes this way, you play boot rule, all right? Whoever has the flat, takes the guy in the flat, takes him. So this guy starts to drop, he reads boot, he's going to go take that guy. The corner's going to squeeze this guy, if he runs an out route, he's got to squeeze him off. Both hook players, robot, what I call robot, which means roll and run and find the tight end. The front side hook guy, stay ahead of him, the back side hook guy, stay behind him. In other words, if we're playing like an over defense, 
As soon as these guys do this and reboot, this guy is just going to turn and run to the spot where he knows the tight end is going to be. And this guy is going to come out and try to stay behind this guy. And Mike's going to try to get ahead of him. You can't drop. You just roll and run and cover the guy. The strong safety plays here, plays under this guy. This guy squeezes him. It doesn't make any difference what the coverage is. Every time it's a play pass, we totally match the pattern. So you don't get nickel dime to death with that stuff. And, and, and every coverage, it's the same way. If we're playing cover two, who's the flat defender weak? Five under, two deep. It's a corner. So what's a corner do? Take the guy coming in the flat. The two hook players now are who? The Will and the Mike. What do you guys do? Robot the Y shallow. Now, just taking cover three a step further for the NCAA pass that everybody runs, that's flow pass. So we play flow pass rule. Flow pass rule for the linebackers is to flood. The will has first crosser or number four. Mike's looking to match number three or robot Y shallow. The Sam is going to number two, and the safety is going to push to one through the curl. That's how we would play flow pass. Now, what does robot mean? If this guy stays front side and does this, this guy goes out in the flat and he does this, he's on this guy, safety's on that guy, he's got that guy. Will's got first crosser and four. They run Y shallow X dig that everybody runs. What's Will got? First crosser or four. What's the first crosser? He takes that guy. Mike does what? You've got three, but robot wise shallow. So what is going to happen to you now? You're going to get high load in the middle of the field, right? The X or the Z is going to run a dig. The other guy is going to run a post. You've got a three-level vertical stretch in the middle of the field. So if you stay the same in pass coverage and play two levels, you've got no chance if they can throw it and catch it. So let's say this guy runs the dig and this guy runs the post. He robots and gets as deep as he has to to find the, the, the middle of the field. And when this guy goes across, the Sam hangs, takes the inside check down. He takes the outside check down. All right, so you, we match the pattern. What's this corner going to do? Squeezing man to man. He doesn't have two in the seam, right? What's this corner doing? Squeezing man to man until he gets an over route, both of them. So that's, that's you just... Teach the principles of the coverage and play it and do it over and over and over and over. And that's, that's how we play play action passes. And what I say, guys, I say over and over and over. I don't say, what do you do on flow pass, Mike? I expect our Mike to say, match the three and robot the Y shallow. That's what I, I don't want to hear any other bullshit that you said on the corner in Detroit. Nothing. Match the three and robot the Y shallow. Everything else is useless information. Just teach those principles. What do I do on the boot? Weak side hook player. Robot and find the Y and keep them cut off. That's it. If I'm the weak side flat defender, what do I do on the boot? Take the guy in flat. Simple. I don't want to hear anything else. Because I say it the same every time, and I expect them to say it back to me like I say it to them, or we say it to them, whoever's coaching them. All right? That, and, and that's three deep zone no matter how it goes. All right, now, the best pass coverage is to defend in the middle of the field, in my opinion. That, and, I, and I think as a high school coach, if you could play it, and you can play it off, you can play it bail or whatever, and again, it's a middle of the field coverage, and that's what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to talk about split safety coverages here in a minute. But with two backs in the backfield, I think you should play an eight-man front. You've got to stop the run. You've got to get more guys up there than they can block. Make the Z be a blocker. If they got two tight ends in there, put one more in. If they only got one skill guy in the game, take a defensive back out. That's what I, we do. All right, now, cover one is a man-to-man -man middle of the field coverage with a rat in a hole. Never put your linebackers in a stress position. 
the corners have the wide receivers. And the simplest way to do it is just play matchup, and the corners have them, slot, they go over with them. It doesn't make any difference. You don't have to play it that way. So basically, whether you play bump and run, and I can talk to you about that, bail off these guys or play them off, they got those guys man-to-man. -man. With the same in cover one, is it a middle-of-the-field coverage? So whether the corner is playing press, bump and run, or off, what horizontal leverage position should he have? Exactly the same as three deep zone. Right? Safety's in the same spot. So now if I'm going to play bump and run on this guy, and he's split where I have this guy split, is he outside a divider? He's outside a divider. On that thing, the divider's one yard's top of the number. So that guy, does he have grass to run a nine? It's five yards from the boundary, the way I drew him up there. No. All right? So I'm going to play that guy what technique? Slightly inside, and the nine is inside. Because he's too far away from the safety, if I let him inside release, the ball is getting there before the safety. What if he lined it up in here? How would I play him? Outside technique, right? What has he done? Bought grass to run a nine, got a lot of horizontal area to fade away from me, and all that type of thing, so I'm going to play him outside technique. If he releases inside, he's going to run into the linebackers and the middle of the field safety. Now, if the guy is on the divider, I tell the guy to play him full press. Just get the head up on him and play him and mirror him. But if you were off, you would use the same principles, correct? Same horizontal principles. If you bailed off the guy, lined up and bump and run and ran off of him on the snap, you would play the same principles. All right, now, so this part of the coverage is technique. All right, let's just say we're playing with these guys right here, Sam, Mike, and Will. You can play this in a 30. It doesn't make any difference. You can play it in a 4-3. All right, this guy has this guy. We play with sky, sky support. You can play it with back or two. All right, these three guys have these two guys, and they cut the tight end if he goes across. So the safety can still play sky support. All right, so let's just say they run the basic pattern here that we've had up. I'm going to knock that guy out of here before. All right, he's got him, he's got him, this guy's got this guy, right? He's got him, he's got him, he's in the hole, he's in the middle. Now, do you think you can defend the middle of the field with that coverage? You always have a rat in the hole that can cut anybody, and the backers overplay the backs to the outside until they get to the seam. They don't overrun the seam. Because then if the guy runs in the seam, they can't, they can't play him. And he's wide enough away from the safety that the safety can't do what? Make the play for him if the guy runs down the seam. So this is a really good coverage. Now, if the tight end goes across and the backs stay divided, let me just give you the only rules for the linebackers are this. You can play this in under, over, 4, 3. It doesn't make any difference. Is... This guy's always got the second back. You never play in and out. In other words, if they run this pattern right here, he's got him, he's got him. Who's the free guy now? He's right there. This guy's got him. All right, if they go both back strong, who's the free guy? Let's say they're in the eye and they do this. Who's the free guy? Right? He's always got the second back. We would take these guys in the eye formation as they came out. He would take this guy, and he would take that guy. If they run the Y shallow, who cuts that guy? Who's the free guy? Will takes this guy. The safety now robots the hole for the dig on flow pass. Because the safety's got the tight end on everything except what? Y shallow. Because then he can play sky support, and you can be in an eight-man front. Now... Playing close coverage of any kind, there's some principles that I think you have to have with your players. That really should on this field go about like that, okay? All right, now, 
if there's a receiver here and he releases out here, what position vertically would I want to stay on that guy? Got no help out here, right? I want to stay high and inside on the guy and keep him cut off. If a guy releases in here, where do I want to stay? Low and outside. Why? A lot of people play this coverage and don't use the middle of the field safety with the technique of their outside people. In other words, you stand up again. If I'm the left corner, the ball's in there, I'm here like this, we offhand jam, you release, and he goes outside. I'm going to knock him off, and then we're going to come up the field, and I'm going to stay high, shoulder, keep him cut off. Okay? If he disappears behind me, I'm always going to roll over. Okay? If he releases inside, and if I've lined up properly on him because of my dividers, I ought to always have him where I want him when he comes off the jam. I want to be low and outside, like this. Now, if he runs a dig, I play him this way. Okay, if he runs a seven, I jump back up on him because he's got to run into me because I've got the horizontal position on him. Now, if I'm playing off, you use the same principles. If you're playing bail, you use the same principles. Okay, but that's how you use the middle of the field safety. Now, any time that this receiver gets close enough to run across the field, what we tell our corners is you just yell, rat, 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 which means that if that guy takes off and hauls ass across the field, like the Z going underneath at five yards, then the free linebacker cuts him and takes him, knocks the shit out of him. That's what we try to do. We don't like to get the linebackers taking the receivers through there, so we try to knock the dog out of them. We'll leave the corner, chase them, but we try to knock the dog out of them. And the way to do it, the best way to do it, is if this guy was his ex running across the field and I was Pepper Johnson right here in the middle free and I heard rat, 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 I would hit the guy from down to up and push him into the corner because the corner will probably be higher on him. All right, now, he runs across. I'm going to knock the hell out of him up the field because he'll push him back into the what? Cover guy. And the cover guy chasing the guy going across the field always wants to get ass down on him like this. This is how you chase a guy across the field, right like this. Not like this, which is what I always used to teach. Because now, and I don't know if you get it, but this guy starts across the field and he's running his ass off and you're running your ass off and he stops and whips back on you, you'll never ever defend him. And you're probably not going to beat him across the field anyway. But if you're in this position on him, run. And I'm running like a son of a gun and he whips back on me. You, run, you, you, you at least take that away. Now if you get cut, then you can come off the guy. If the linebackers will cut him. All right, but this is a great run defense, and this is a close coverage pass defense. We played this, this, this every snap. This is Jerry Glanville. Every snap. One rat bomb. Every snap. Saw more nines in one year of football than I saw in the previous 15. Because that's what they're going to try to beat you with on the outside. You don't have to play bump and run, though. You don't have to play bump and run. But this cover one is a real good coverage. It's a simple coverage to teach. Teach the strong safety. If I'm the strong safety and this guy's the tight end, we line him up three by five, all right, just like we wouldn't cover three. If that guy blocks, we're run supporting. All right, because, and if he blocks down, I don't have him across anyway, right? If he releases up the field, I want the safety to run to what position on him? Is he inside the corner's divider? So I would be outside and what? Low. So I want to cover the tight end like this. I don't want to run up here and let the guy do what? Push off, Push off of you. So as he, back up a little bit so we don't run in the podium. If I was like this right here and he released up the field and he ran that little hook, I would get in this position on him right here, low shoulder, and play him like this or whatever. If he runs down the middle of the field, what's going to happen? Who's there? Safety. So why would you play him high? You can't deny the throw if you're playing a guy high in cover one. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that? It's, just, it's just pretty simple. Okay. All right, now, split safety coverages. All 
right, hold up a minute. All right, I got the same kind of uh, diagram for split safety coverages. All right, like right here, that's, that's the two deep places on the field all right, where you don't want people to be. You don't want them to be in here, and you don't want them to be out there when you're playing too deep. All right, now, what's the principle if we play zone and we say the first thing we're going to do is drop and reroute? That's our philosophy of zone, right? Second thing is pattern match. Third thing is break on the ball. The seam of the field always stays the same. So where is the seam of the field? Now I'm telling you, I got... Can you hear me? No. The seam of the field always stays the same. 14 to 17 yards from the boundary. Okay? So now, if I'm going to reroute the seam now and cover three deep zone, you never let a guy run in the seam. And cover two deep zone, you always reroute the guy to the seam 10 yards deep when he gets there. You've heard people talk about we always match and run with people down the field. If you match and run with people down the field, you, you know, you're going to always struggle on the short stuff. Always struggle on the short stuff. I mean, the number one play in ball... It, it, I don't care how they get there, and they don't have to be in a one-back set for them to do it. It's for them to run a seam on this side. This guy runs a middle read if it's too deep. This guy runs across, and they throw the ball and catch it and run off the reroute. If you're running with the guy down the middle, then you've got to full match everybody else, or you've got no defense. You know what I'm saying by full match? That means somebody's got to come across with the guy coming across. So if we're playing zone, we tried to play zone. Now, what's the reroute principle now? I want to reroute the guy to the seam. In other words, the way I have that drawn there, that guy would have been rerouted to the seam, which in turn does what for the safety? Whose divider is your hash mark, right? Which this is not it on this diagram. This is a college field. So if I was dropping here, and let's say this is 10 yards deep, I would body position and reroute that guy and be on top of him at 10 yards and there is no way that I would let him enter any of this part of the field. And the way we teach it is I put a cone 20 yards deep down in the middle of the field. I tell a guy, I said, you get your asshole on a string to that cone and you don't ever change it. And then you body position the guy all the way like this. In other words, I'm defending the best I can with my body to keep this man from running into that cone. And I'm going to stay. And the, and the closer he lines up to the seam, the further I can line up inside of him. Right? Because he's put himself in the seam. So all I have to do now is do what? Make sure he doesn't get back underneath me. Now why is it important? Again, more important in this than in the other one, to be on top of the guy at 10 yards. The faster that guy gets on top of me, he's on top of me right now, and he runs the middle read, the more he does what? Splits the safeties. Too deep coverage. Correct? If I can stay on top of them and reroute them at 10 yards in this position right here, and we can jam in college and you can too, so you can knock the shit out of them. All right, now, you've created a what for the safety on your side. He's got leverage on this guy because his divider is the beginning of the seam. So he never has to defend a guy from outside in unless the reroute guy screws it up. So we do not run with people down the field. If we're going to run with people down the field, then we get into the next part of our coverage deal, which is play match man. Not man to man like I just showed you. Match man. If I'm going to run with this guy, and what we tell our guys in that, if we want to play what I call two cut, and you want to change the principle on them, and you want to run with everybody down the field, we tell the guys, you line up on your guys. If your guy runs an inside pattern or runs vertical, you run with them. If he runs to the flat, you cut the one. That's it. Now you got everything matched. This pattern that I had right here, if we had corner is playing this like cover two, this corner is playing like cover two. I'll show you that in a minute. You got Mike, Will, this doesn't work out too good, and Sam. 
What's, this, what's Sam do? Is this guy running vertical or inside? What would he do? Run with him. What's that guy doing? Vertical inside, what would he do? Take him. This guy does this, what would the mic do? That's not vertical or inside, right? He'd run and cut the one. In the corner and jam and play the flat. If he threw him the ball, he'd play him. If you want to match him, that's as simple as it gets. And cover two. I just call it cut. Play cut on him. Sometimes when they run a bunch pass, instead of playing zone, we'll say we'll cut the bunch. So if you're on a, you've got three guys in a cluster, got them one, two, three. If three goes to the flat, what do I do as the inside hook guy? Did my guy go inside or up the field? No. So what do I do? Cut the one. They run this pattern right here. They put them in a cluster. This is the ball. This guy goes in, he goes out, and he does that. How would we defend that? This guy's guy is inside or up the field, right? So he does that. This guy right here, this guy goes to the flat, what's he do? Cuts the one. This guy right here is playing the flat. You're basically trapping the flat in too deep. What you take, you can nail a bunch, you can do a lot of things. But that's the too deep principle. What's that? We would predetermine how we're going to, we, just, just in my hillbilly way of thinking, I think cover two stinks against bunch passes. Because you get high load in the flat or you get high load in the hook. Right? And, and, and in other words, if, if they run this pass and you're playing cover two, this guy's got to play soft because that's the one that he's got to worry about. But when they're bunched, he's got to play so deep to take that away, and the safety's got to roll over the top of it. They throw the ball in the flat. You got nothing. What we would play a team, I would say that all three-man bunches in cover two we're going to nail this week. Nail means you play quarter-quarter principle. And, and, and nail basically is, you got three guys there. It's a three-man bunch, right? Calls Call nail. Nail means I got the first out short, first in short, first up outside, first up inside. It's like a box. Now, if we're playing zone on that, which means we're only matching the pattern with what? Zone with zone distribution, zone integrity. If we call box, then we take a man. Once we get them and buy them, we take them in. Why do we need two calls? It's the same pattern match because it's relative to what they're playing on this side. If they're playing zone on this side and this guy runs across the field, you don't need to carry him back. You just slide back with him zone-wise. If, if these guys are playing man over here, then you might box that bunch because now when this guy does this, you've got to take him back because those guys are playing man-to-man -man or some kind of match coverage on that side. Yeah. Okay. All right, does anybody have any questions? Now, basically, one thing I did want to talk to you about is the jam of cover two, how, how a corner jams in cover two. We, we always tell a corner in cover two, you really want to be strong with your outside hand. I also tell the corners that if you move your inside foot first, you, you'll decrease your chances of crossing over by about 60%. In other words, I'm going to play right corner now. Ball's in there. If I'm here like this, if the first thing I move is this foot right here, I've created a situation where I've done what with my feet? Got my feet outside my shoulders. And as soon as you get your feet outside your shoulders in any athletic event, you have to do what? Take another step to be able to move.
over and you over with the turn, which I don't like because you can't see. So if he goes outside, I'm only going to try to hit him with this hand because I want to turn this way. And our guys, a lot of them, they'll be hitting the guy and be like this. They're already turned, so they got the guy cut off when they lose him. Inside, you can hit him with both. All right, now, a lot of people in cover two, when the guy inside releases, they backpedal the guy out like this. We always tell our guys to play a sail technique, turn it topside like this, and come out like this. Why? Because I want to defend what? The seven back to the flat. If I'm like this, I have to play deeper to play the seven because my back's to it. I can see the ball and I run into the seven route this way and don't have to play as deep to split the zone and I got a better chance to get to the ball in the flat. Just sit down and open. I'm, I'm like this. You can't get outflanked. Ball's thrown in the flat. I'm going to plant on this foot, open the hips and turn, get your knee over the toe and accelerate right there. That, that's how we would try to, to play it in cover two. But, but I think the principle of the, the, the outside hand jam is real important in cover two. And I think being, when you play split safety coverages, I'm going to talk to you about one, just one more second. I know you guys were trying to kick me out of here, but I don't have any more sheets. Um, see, if, we had a lot of success playing the run and shoot. We, we, we held Houston to less points than anybody in the league for the last two or three years that they were in the run and shoot and, you know, beat them in the Astrodome. But it doesn't make any difference that it's a run and shoot. It's just a two by two. This is my favorite formation to play split safety coverages against. We will call a lot of defenses like under double two three deuce. Deuce means if it's one back set, two by two, we're going to play cover two. I don't care if it's slot, pro, whatever it is. So we actually call what we're going to play if there's two backs in the backfield, what we're going to play if it's a one back set. You cannot adjust the coverages out on back motion. That it, it's got to be lined up. All right, but anyway, what we would do here is we would play principles of coverages on a side. So we play cover two. We just discussed that, right? Probably playing nickel here, but this guy's a Sam linebacker. And I call him a star. Okay, so we play two. Mike's relating to three. Will's over here. Corner's playing his deal. All right, now, the next thing that we would play is cover eight, which is quarter-quarter, which means now this corner is going to come off, safety is going to go here, and now when we play quarter-quarter, what are we playing? You've got the first out, short, first in, short, first up inside, first up outside. You can do it from the same look, run the corner off. All right, now, if this guy runs to the flat, what can this guy do? Double that guy. If this guy runs vertical, he has to play him inside out. Play him inside out. You're going, to, you're going to end up taking him. Who has the smash? The flat defender, who's always the guy that has the first outside. So if they run this and this, he's back here, he's here, he takes that. It's all over. That's quarter-quarter principle. All right, now, what do you teach the corner when you're playing quarter-quarter on two guys? We tell them this. You, you line up on the divider like you always would, but if the number two receiver goes vertical, you've got to get inside technique. Because if you play this all the time, you're going to get this pattern right here. And if the corner, what's a safety have to do? Take that guy. What's a corner have to do? Take that guy. Double post. Or a deep spin route. But if you mix this up, this up, and then the other thing that we would play against Houston is that we would play cut which cut is cover two. Now you carry the guys. You don't play zone and reroute. You carry them. I'll just show it to you on this side. I already talked to you about it once. All right, here I am. Here he is. Here he is. All right, if this guy runs there, what do I do? And cut one simple principle. My man runs inside or up the field. What do I do? Run with him and carry him and cover him. If he runs to the flat, what do I do? Cut the one. So if this guy does this and that guy does that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. That's really my match. I got a half safety over the top. 
It's just like playing two man, except you got better leverage on everybody because you're taking them after the pat pattern distribution. If this guy goes vertical, who's got him? He's got to take him. We play no smash rule when we play cut, so the corner stays in the flat, plays this guy. Just stays in the flat and he'd play the smash. If they, if they ran this pattern right here, hook, hook, there, what will we do? Jam this guy, this guy run with him, the Mike's guy went to the flat, hit cut the one. But if you just took those three things right there on split safeties and played those three things and maybe a little bit of two man, five under man, quarterback would never know what happened. Every now and then you can line up in this cover two look, run one of the safeties down and play cover one, you get eight guys in the box, eight man front against this stuff, I mean, you're in good shape. And, and, it, and it, you can do it all out of the same look, and it really keeps the quarterback screwed up. So would we play this, these same principles against trips? No. Trips and two backs in the backfield, three deep zone is good, flood the zones, do all that stuff. Split safety coverages are good, I think, against this type of thing. Am I done?